In this video, I'm going to be talking about another important article in contrastive learning. The model is called CONCERT. It means a contrastive framework for self-supervised sentence representation transfer. So I want to explain this article in 2021. Learning high quality sentence representations benefits a wide range of natural language processing tasks. Through Bears-based pre-trained language models, achieve high performance on many downstream tasks. The native derived sentence representations are proved to be collapsed and thus produce a poor performance on the semantic textual similarity tasks. In this paper, they present CONCERT, a contrastive framework for self-supervised sentence representation transfer that adopts contrastive learning to fine-tune BERT in an unsupervised and effective way. By making use of unlabeled text, CONCERT solved the collapse issue of BERT derive sentence representations and make them more applicable for downstream tasks. So BERT and many of these pre-trained models, they suffer from anisotropy. So when you want to do classification, you see the model is collapsed. So certain classes are collapsed to a fixed uh, point or a fixed dimension for, or a fixed subspace, which we call it dimensional collapse. But we can avoid it by using contrastive learning. This is the, co the correlation diagram between the gold similarity score, which is x-axis, and the model predicted cosine similarity, and this benchmark. So to alleviate the collapse issue of BERT as well as reduce the requirement for labeled data, we propose a novel sentence level training objective based on contrastive learning. By encouraging two augmented views from the same sentence to be closer while keeping views from other sentences away, we reshape the BERT-derived sentence representation space and successfully solve the collapse issue. Moreover, we, they propose multiple data augmentation strategies for contrastive learning, including adversarial attack, token shuffling, cutoff, and dropout. that effectively transfer the sentence representations to downstream tasks. So this is the general architecture. First, we have a batch of sentences. We have data augmentation, different methods. After giving it to BERT encoder layer and after average pooling, we want to maximize agreement. And of course, keeping distance if they are not related. So there are three major components. As you know, a data augmentation module that generates different views for input samples, a token embedding layer. Then a shared, this one, which is a shared BERT encoder that computes sentence representations for each input text. During training, we use average pooling of a token. Uh, you can use any kind of pooling, but they use average pooling of the token embedding at the last layer to obtain sentence representations. But you can also use different layers because you have 11, 12 layers, so you can take any combination of the layers and make a pooling from them. And finally, a contrastive loss. This contrastive loss layer 
on top of the BERT, it maximizes agreement between one representation and its corresponding version that is augmented from the same sentence while keeping it distant from other sentence representations in the same batch. So there are many ways that, for example, four of the typical data augmentation methods that we usually use is this. Either you are token shuffling, adversarial attack, cutoff, dropout. So for each text, we first pass it to the augmentation module. Of course, when we use when we say dropout, it means two different things. The first one is just uh, <clears throat> just omit one word, and. Uh, so we have two sentences, one with omitted one word, but it is very risky because it can uh, also include noise. It uh, cannot avoid noise. But the other approach is that you give uh, two you, you give one sentence two times because there is a probability of dropout, probability of dropout, for example, for any pre-trained model, uh, that there, for, for a certain probability, something happens. So each time your output is different. So I said this one that when you say dropout, it means two different techniques, completely different. And you should know which one the author has implemented. So we first pass it to the data augmentation in which two transforms are applied uh, to generate two versions of token embeddings. We adopt the normalized temperature scale cross entropy loss as the contrastive objective. During each training step, we randomly sample n texts from D to construct a mini batch, resulting in two n representations after augmentation. So each data point is trained to find out its counterpart among two times n minus one in, in batch negative sample. So this, this loss is truly a contrastive loss because not only we are using the positive pairs, but also we are using the negative samples as well. While techniques like BYOL, these models, SimSium, and these are, we call it, it's better to say non-contrastive because we only use positive samples. So there is no contrast. But here we are using negative samples, so we use the word non-contrastive. So there are techniques of adversarial attack it is generally used to improve models' robustness. So they generate adversarial samples by adding worst case perturbation to the input sample. Token shuffling, uh, since the bag of words nature in the transformer architecture, the proposition, the position encoding is only is the only factor about sequential information. Thus, we implement this strategy by just passing the shuffle position ID, just shuffle this to the embedding layer, while keeping the order of the token ID unchanged. And the last uh, way that we use for augmentation is cutoff, which proposes a simple and efficient data augmentation. And they randomly erase some tokens, feature dimensions, or token spans. And finally, dropout, which is a widely used regularization method to avoid overfitting. We also show its effectiveness as an augmentation strategy for contrastive learning. So here they randomly drop elements in the token embeddings by a specific probability. Note that this strategy is different from cutoff since each element is considered individual. And finally, we do incorporate supervision signal because it is a sentence per classification task where the model are trying to distinguish relation between two. So it's either contradiction, entailment, or neutral. So it's a kind of supervised signals that they can use in order to learn. And finally, they propose three ways for incorporating additional supervised signals. 
We jointly train the model, supervised and unsupervised, and supervised training when unsupervised transfer, and joint transfer when the unsupervised transfer. Different ways to train. And uh, they use, uh, the implementation is based on experts, which I have explained in the playlist for sentence embedding or sentence representation. We use, uh, uh, this Mrs. Uh, Gorievich in Darmstadt University has explained expert method, which is a really interesting thing. Uh, so I consider it as a supervised contrastive method. Of course, they use LSTM and they use CMEs and network. But nowadays we have much more powerful methods for sentence representation that I will explain. You can also see the performance visualization with different combination of data augmentation. So the row indicates the first data augmentation strategy, while the column, these columns uh, indicate the second data augmentation. So if you first use token cutoff and then use feature cutoff, this is the average experiment correlation, 70%. And influence of a batch size. So those in batch negative samples improve the tra training strategy. And they propose concert as self-supervised contrastive for transferring sentence representations to downstream task. The framework does not need extra structure and is easy to implement for any encoder. They demonstrate the effectiveness of their framework on various STS datasets. Both our unsupervised and supervised methods achieve new state-of-the-art performance. Furthermore, few shot experiments, I have a playlist for few shot learning. Few shot experiments suggest that our framework is robust in the data scarcity scenarios. We also compare multiple combinations of data augmentation strategies and provide fine-grained analysis for interpreting how our approach works.